just clean the front glass. They shimmer and shine and look cool. And you should never have someone come over to your house and film with water spots. Look at how much that looks better. Oh. Only come out when Corey's here. You know what gets those clean tanks really clean? Aquarium co-op towels. So they're not even that clean yet. Because you're not using well, those. It's, on your it's not microfiber. I know. But it does work. Yeah. This is the tank that Lizzie built. And I remember when you guys were doing this, she said, I really just want to have this jungle look. <laughs> I Lizzie didn't accomplish that. We got a jungle. <laughs> But look at the size of him, he's as long as the cave, right? Right. You see how they're kind of hanging there? Can you imagine a group of them in the 800? Is this one of your babies that you spawned here and grown up now? All of these are my own babies. So this that, is the that's runt. That's the runt. Yeah. yeah. The runty there. So they're... Wait, even these ones? Yep. Oh, yeah. wow. Okay. okay. So, and then these guys, these are the dozen that we got at that... Right, you were trading half. Trade so, half yeah, we traded yeah. half for these. Cool looking fish, though. Yeah, Jimmy wants some. I want some. Everyone wants some. No, I know. I've, I've probably got a thousand people that have. When are you going to have babies with those? Now they all the spots on that one. Yeah. I like them without the spots, honestly. Yeah, kind of like that. Yeah, just like the brown <laughs> bars. Yeah. I like them when they're more of the brownie type color. Yeah. Less of the blue. I mean,. They're wrong. They both look great, but if I got to choose, I'd be like, ooh, I want... I'd almost have a tank of each type. Right. Even though they're the same, I get that, but... Right. All right. Today, I think the video is all about my stickers. Is 18, 19, 20, 21. I think there's 24. Oh, so anyway, no. we're missing up to three of them. I'm going to have to go to the warehouse. Anyway, today's video is actually about all the plecos. There's a lot of plecos going on in here right now. One of the things you notice, I pointed this out a little bit, is... Empty tanks, it actually feels good <laughs> to have empty tanks because then I can move on to other projects. These are 397 eggs. Yeah. Um, in, in, the, in the tumbler. This tumbler. Yep. And then um, if you come up here, so these are, these are the fry from the first one. Wow. So you don't get a huge number yeah, it looks like 12 or something. Yeah, um, but that's pretty typical with the L number plecos. The leopard frogs, I've got one confirmed female. In fact, I might bring the other males up to the, um, the, to the farm. Okay, yeah. They're starting to be pretty regular. Nice. Yeah, that's true. We should only bring them, we should bring them to the farm first. That way, because right. they stop spawning, you'll need them back. Yeah, we need, we need to have backup, yeah. right. These guys here are... I love when my fish come back to me after Claro plecos. I still want those. Well, I have them. The pairs. You keep down threatening there. to stop breeding them. They're sitting on eggs right now. Yeah, I want to breed those again for sure. They are a really cool pleco. How long have you been growing those out? Because I feel like those are already pretty darn big. These are about a month and a half old. Really? Yeah. Because they only get like two inches. Yeah. Yeah. Well, magical system right there. Want to see something else really cool? What I'm finding kind of cool. If you're finding it cool, I'll find it cool, and the internet will be like, skip okay, forward. So, <laughs> so, in here, this guy's sitting on fry right now. Yeah, I'll get it. An albino, yep. Okay. But look at the size of him. He's as long as the cave, right? Right. Okay. We're going to go in another room now, Jimmy. Uh oh. Follow me over. It's here. in the hidden room. We'll send the camera in next. Do you know the toilet again? <laughs> it's underneath the, I can see one yeah. in front of the crew. The albino ones, right? Yeah. They're about two inches long and they're spawning like crazy in here. Hmm. They're, but the fry get eaten. I've taken some of the fry out, but oh, wow. see? He's so yeah. he's small. He's, he's got a huge, he's like, small, bristles though. on him right. for that size. Right. And the female back there on the tube. I really like these two rocks. Oh, wow. Because they're completely hollow. Oh, yeah. I want to look at this. Like this. I think it's hilarious. <laughs> oh, so the, when you have an extra shower full of driftwood and... Failed uh, experiment. You're messy. Wash those uh, down the drain. Yeah. So, yeah. So, I, I've never had bristlenose spawn 
that small. Yeah, well, I feel like they might be actually smaller, but age is okay because that's re they're really developed. Right. That's kind of cool. It's like you've made a, a dwarf, dwarf bristle nose. If all the babies grow out to be small, we might be onto something. And by we, I mean you. These are the bristle nose ones. How old is, are the fish in that tank? A couple weeks older than those. So Good maybe Lord. two months. I feel like I've got to really up my feeding game. Do they still get baby brine every day at that size? I give them extra. Extra baby brine? If I have extra. Dang, okay. Okay, so these I'm going to have to scare up for you. I think there's leopard frog up top, right? Yeah. yeah. And then the snowball ones. These, these are actually L201 large spot. Nice. Oh, look at that, Corey. Here's your favorite fish right yep. there. That's a good looking little coconut hut right there, those fish. Yeah, I, I actually think um, I know a store locally that sells these. That's right. So I heard it mentioned on one of the live streams the other day about, you were talking about heaters. and Yeah. All 10 of these 10s are on that one Finex controller. Okay, yeah. So they're plugged into power strips. The power strips are plugged into each other and then one power strip is plugged into the controller. It says 83, that's a lie. Okay. I mean, that's one of the things I wish they would let us do is calibrate the controller. Yeah. The tank's running about, top is about 80, 81 and a half, bottom's about 80 and a half. So many failed heaters, um, probably in the thousands of dollars right now. That's why I always ask Dean, because he always brings out a big crate. He's like, oh, you mean all of these heaters that don't work? Tell me again yeah. how you like these, Corey. Yeah. Okay. Seems to be working well. I also do have a room heater. I turned it off right now that is set on that digital thermostat. That's the one I was talking about on a thermostat. I bought one of those at the club for 50 bucks. Those things are probably like 250 And I'm what I'm dealing with is trying to figure out where to position the probe because the probe right now is behind your head over there. I see. Because it's for the room. Yeah. All right. The next thing I want to talk about, because... I have to get involved with this customer service. Oh, no. Every day, all day long, people are struggling with brine shrimp. What are the tips you've got? You've hatched brine shrimp every day of your life, like the last 50 years. What are the easiest tips when people are going wrong? I just add tap water uh -huh. using the, the salt that is soon to come out, I think. Right, so our marine salt. Yeah, yeah. So it's a marine salt. I have used just rock salt, and I've switched to the Zis hatchers now. If you can't afford them, the pop bottles work fine. Anything will hatch them. Right. It's, it's luxury at that point. Sometimes we put too much air in and sometimes not enough. So you gotta figure out that air to water. So what happens is if you get too much air, as soon as they hatch, you start smashing them against each other and it breaks all their limbs off, they can't swim, they die. And then you get a smelly mess. I go 36 hours. You can do 24, but I find I, 36 hours works for me. Then I separate them, and if you look behind you, Jimmy, here. So this is just brine shrimp and, and water. Like salt water or just water Salt water. water. Okay. This is brine shrimp that's hatching. So this one I separated this morning, fed half of it, put the rest back in salt water. I'll feed the rest tonight. And then I'll start it again tomorrow morning. I'll separate that one, do the same thing. Tonight I'll have that one going, so it'll be 36 hours, basically. Does it drive you nuts that only one of your screws on that thing is blue? There's a reason for that. Oh, yeah? I can't remember what it was. <laughs> I can't imagine a real reason other than you ran out of screws. <laughs> no, I think I stripped the hole out, so I had to use a bigger... You I... mean you're not perfect? Well, I'm close to perfect, but... <laughs> And then I know even you, every once in a while, you have a failed hatch. How often does that happen, roughly? So a guy that's been doing it every day for 50 years, how often do you get the, huh, it just didn't go right? And now it's time for a commercial <laughs> break. What makes a failed hatch? Generally, it's too much air, you went too long, yep. and you've developed... Because you turn the air back on each time and turn it off? Is that how no, it can change? No, my, my air never changes. Okay. Uh, once okay. I get it set, I leave it like that. Okay. Were we, were we going to have a commercial here? 
<laughs> we got to pay, got to pay some bills, D. We do have to pay some bills once in a while. <laughs> so it wasn't I've, meant to be a commercial, but hey, I'm not, I'm not stopping you. I've been using these eggs yep. since actually before you let them go to the public. Right. Yeah, we had you um, test them. probably several months before. I used to use another brand very prominent in the hobby. Not saying the other brand is bad, it, it worked really well. It worked really well for me, I used it for a lot of years. I haven't had a bad hatch since I switched to these eggs. Used to get one about every month and it just frustrated the heck out of me. Because if you get that bad hatch on the day when the discus need... Right. I've had bad hatches, like one out of like maybe 40 hatches, I get a bad batch, but yeah. now I'm starting to wonder like, Oh, is it my air? Like, what am I doing wrong that like... I think most people are having too much air. I don't, I also don't measure very well salt. I'm like, here's some salt. I don't even close the bag, so my salt is all like caked up. <laughs> oh, that's bad. <laughs> that's bad. So I can't just shake it, it doesn't do anything. But there's more commercials, Jimmy. Uh-oh. What do you got for sale? Well, <laughs> I do sell a lot of fish, but... No, no, why? <laughs> not sorry guys not not online don't ship fish there's a couple new products out that I haven't got to talk about yet two new products two new products that I sell or there's that you sell that you haven't talked about yet that I have not talked that about that means yet. I pay you think I pay attention oh it's gonna be these I bet and another one let me think uh, oh right here <laughs> well, sure it was behind my head. Yeah, my bet. These guys. So I know that on these guys, some people had some pads falling off. That's been fixed now, by the way. It's been fixed. I've had one fall off, but it's not in the water. It was actually when I pulled it out of here. Mm -hmm. What do these cost? $16.99. $16.99. Go on Amazon and, and Google all of the other test strips. And for $16.99, you get 25 You can get 100 of some of them, but no one gives you 200 no one gives you 200. So do I care if one of the pads falls off? No, not a bit. I still have a little bit issue with eyes and color. That's because you're old. But <laughs> 50 years in the hobby, 50 years ago, I didn't have that problem. But I'm old, you know. <laughs> um, these guys, I can never get them to register ammonia, so I must never have any. That's probably true. And I've thought about adding some ammonia to water just to test I it. Did. I did. I did that you? test, yeah. yeah. I, I definitely did a lot of ammonia testing for that one. It was good. Yep. Um, this one, tell them all the things that you did, because for, for a second we had like a scare moment right before they launched. Someone else couldn't get them to work, and we all panicked and retested everything again. Right. And we all came weren't out they, good. Weren't they all putting them in the water too long? I don't know what. I, I can't We still remember. can't identify what they're doing, what yeah. was wrong with their water, but. Yeah. Okay, we paid for enough products now. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Thanks, guys, for listening to that commercial. And now back to your regular scheduled program. He does his own transition. You're going to be out of a job, Jimmy. What type of fish are these? Rice fish. Have, we ever, have fish. we ever done a rice fish video? No. Never? We don't want people to learn our secrets. These are the platinum rice fish. My gold ones have not taken off yet this year. They're just starting. Robert, by the way, is the guy that runs the shop. So... He's like begging me for more rice fish. So I'm like, Robert, I've got babies, but they're not big enough. They're not big enough. You got another thing of babies too. Yeah, and some more. We're gonna go nice. see them. So, so I'm trying to get these up to size for him to take. I've had them down to literally 42 degrees. I've had it freeze over. And actually, I've had ice on the top. Yeah. Also. Can we even fill it? Is this thing? Oh, I can hear it. <laughs> <laughs> I got a slow motion. When I got these, I put them in quarantine, the, the six or eight that I got from the shop, and they started laying eggs in quarantine. And that's where all of these Yeah, because that other tank down there, from. how old are those ones? Those are, um, they've hatched about two weeks ago. Yeah. You've got water sprite in both those tanks? I do? Yes. Is that what that plant is? <laughs> the one on the right is usually the type that we get. Where'd you get the other one? Um, both so, of those, um, a friend gave them to me. Okay. And this is broadleaf, and that's the normal type that you guys right, get. Right, yeah. We always request broadleaf, but they so rarely send it yeah, to us. Nice. What makes these two really, really good is they're both snail-free. <laughs> it's 
so. But I wouldn't have that algae in your discus tank if you had some snails. Yeah, but I'd have a lot more poop. And discus eat from the bottom, and if they eat that poop, they're gonna get sick. <laughs> now you're just, now you're just spreading rumors. <laughs> oh, she's right here. Where? Right in the front of the thing, he's getting it. Oh, good. It's a 20 long. This tank is one that I actually built a fry system for the presentation that I've been doing online. I was at the shop and Robert got these platinum rice fish in that look... And they're more platinum than the ones we had. Ours are more white. These are actually yeah. like more platinum. They're, they're pretty amazing. Yeah. yeah. Then they started spawning. Eggs everywhere. So I thought, okay, the ponds aren't ready. Put a mop in. This is what happens. There's usually a bunch on the bottom. You can see here. Another one, another one. There's two or three, four, five, six. Oh, yeah. Yeah, see what I'm saying? He's... Here there's babies that are hatched and they've been eating brine shrimp. In the Zis breeder box, you can see just a few of the hatch, but if you focus in there, you're going to see a bunch of eggs down in there. So what I do is I find the eggs, grab them. Yeah, it's on your thumb. And just put them in there. You just roll them onto like the java moss? They just kind of... Yeah, kind of. If they stick to my fingers, then I roll them off. So, so there's one r right there. And I just go like that, and it's in there now. So far, I've just put five in there. That's a pair of them. You see how they're kind of hanging there? Mm -hmm. So they have little filaments of thread that the, the, the rice fish stick them with. There's three of them. There's three, yep. This one here, it won't hatch. See how solid color it is? Mm -hmm. That's a bad egg. Didn't get fertilized probably. Right. And then uh, how long for them to hatch out since we're teaching people how to do this? So, so let's just say I'm putting the eggs in today. Mm -hmm. Five to seven days, depending on temperature. Outside, it seems to take a little bit longer than in here. They're a little touchy at first. Um, I use uh, the Ceramicron and my little paintbrush to dust the surface with food. Yeah. Um, after three or four days, I start with baby brine shrimp. Mm -hmm. and, and I, but I, I don't stop feeding the fry food. Right. You gotta eat one. <laughs> Gross. <laughs> Dean makes his own caviar. <laughs> I think they'd be a little salty. There's a little bit of um, java moss down in there. I can see eggs. There's from eggs here. all over it. Yeah, I can right. see eggs from here. I can't believe you let duckweed outside. What I did last year is this is basically a paint strainer that I put a backer bar around so it floats. Mm -hmm. So I'll just get it floating in there. And look it on the little thumbtack. Put some plants in there. The algae works really well. Yeah. One thing I could do is I could just drop That's them what up I was in thinking. There swap mops, yeah. And swap a mop out. Lots of mosquito larvae in here, which is just food when you put them in. Right. So even though all the water here could have mosquitoes, they're getting eaten in all the other ponds. Right. Right. I'm surprised that the tetras have lasted that long. Why? Because he's a big fish. I mean, yeah. I've lost one. I'm surprised how big those beefy ones are getting there. Can you imagine a group of them in the 800? It'd be pretty cool. That's just two feet of muscle. Yeah, you're going to come on one day. He's going to be just like, he'll crawl to the living room or something. So they can live out of water, then you be like, oh God. I've never heard in. him hit the lid yet. And that is a wrap. <laughs>